In this video, I want to talk about some of the strange things happening all around us. Now, what I'm about to discuss may not be glaring just yet in Nigeria. Well, the truth is, it is happening all over the world and spreading like wildfire. And this isn't happening only out there in the world. We also see it in church. Many people who say they are Christians are embracing, accepting, tolerating strange beliefs, strange doctrines, strange lifestyles. Somehow, they manage to twist the word of God to suit their belief. We're living in a time when you want to feel a form at school, at the airport, in a hospital, or anywhere at all. And you have this long list of pronouns to choose from. Gone are the days when things were so simplified. He or she, him or her, man or woman, male or female, boy or girl. As a matter of fact, you are expected to ask people the pronouns they use before you address them. Something like, hi, my name is John, and I use they, them pronouns. What's yours? And in case you don't know, there are 78 gender pronouns and five forms of gender identity today. Transgender, which applies to a person whose gender is different from the one they were born with. Cisgender, which applies to someone whose gender matches the one they were born with. Non-binary or genderqueer applies to someone who does not identify as a male or female. Gender fluid applies to a person whose gender identity changes over time. Agender applies to a person who describes themselves as being genderless. People can even wear badges like this one to signify the preferred pronoun so that when you approach them, you will know how to address them without offending them. So, should we go ahead and embrace these ideologies because times are changing and we don't want to offend anyone? Hmm. But what about offending the one person that we should actually fear? Even though times are changing, but does God's word change? Well, stay tuned, I'll be right back so we can talk these things through and see things from God's own perspective. Hey, 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 welcome back. My name is Michelle and this is Your Circle TV. Now, if this is your first time tuning in, to this channel. Mwah. God bless you. I love you. But if you've always been on board, just know that I appreciate you. The Bible says in Genesis 127 that male and female, God created them. But today, the distinction between male and female seem very blurry. Rather than using a simple word woman to identify the female gender, a gender inclusive word called birthing people or pregnant people has been adopted in order not to offend and quote people with womb like women, transgenders, and non-binary people. When Ketanji Brown Jackson, the very first black woman to serve in the U.S. Supreme Court, was asked during her Senate confirmation hearings, who is a woman? She refused to define the word woman. According to her, she is not a biologist. Wow, I didn't even know one needs to be a biologist to define who a woman is. So this obviously intelligent woman was unwilling to admit that men and women are biologically different. In defiance to scientific and human history, who was she afraid of? Who was she trying not to offend? Individuals and organizations are working so hard to create an inclusive environment where nobody will feel offended that the gender they identify with isn't included. For instance, Disney announced that they no longer address their visitors as ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, but rather they now say dreamers of all ages. Let me tell you something about Disney. One of its executives named Latoya said that she is advancing a not at all secret gay agenda to insert queerness in children's cartoons and that half of the cartoon characters in their production will be LGBTQIA. Ha! Ah, what do you think Disney is doing? Influence, indoctrination. These people are very strategic, very intentional about planting these things in children's cartoons to influence them. So it's not about information. It is simply about influence. Darren Hardy in his book Compound Effects says that everyone is affected by three kinds of influences. One, input, what you feed your mind. Two, associations, the people you spend time with. And three, your environment and which includes your surroundings. What we constantly expose our minds to through what we see and what we hear influences our thoughts, our words, our actions, our decisions, our choices, our habits, our character, and ultimately our destination. So exposing children to these things is causing a huge psychological damage and we assume it is normal. No, it is not. It is all a demonic, well-calculated agenda to recondition their minds and how they see themselves and how they act. And lots and lots of children are feeding on this information every day. A four-year-old girl came out as a boy doing a pride parade in Vancouver, Canada. Now, whilst many people were no, applauding the mother, saying, ah, well done, thank you for encouraging and supporting the boy to live his truth. Some people were like, ah, ah. Why now? Four-year-old. What does she know? Florida Surgeon General Joseph Ladapo referred to this four-year-old girl's case as gender dysphoria, and he advised that minors experiencing gender dysphoria should receive counseling instead to address their concerns. He condemned gender-affirming care for children, saying that 80% of it resolves by the time they get older. 
Let me share a story with you of a former transgender, Walt Hyatt. Walt was sexually molested by his uncle and his parents didn't help matters. He began to despise himself and his body and started to find consolation in dressing as a girl. So obviously he was trying to drown his pain inflicted by his past. Therefore, dressing as a girl became a hiding place where he felt safe from painful conflicts. The obsession grew as he got older and he underwent a gender reassignment surgery. But despite doing that, the painful conflict in his heart didn't change. He also knew that the surgeon's knife didn't change him from man to woman. Walt later encountered Christ after attempting suicide and his life changed. Now he advises those struggling with gender identification issues to get into therapy to find out what is causing this desire rather than opting for surgery. He says it is categorically impossible to change one's gender and there is nothing normal about wanting to become a different gender. People who want to change their genders have deep psychological issues and they need help. Homosexuals, lesbians and transgenders were not born that way. Despite an enormous amount of research being done, no scientific evidence can be found to substantiate this view, yet it is reported as a fact. Ecclesiastes 7.29 says that God made us plain and simple, but we have made ourselves very complicated. So what exactly is going on? I will tell you what it is. It is rebellion. It is simply the masses saying, God, we don't want you. We don't want your leadership. We don't want anything to do with you. We want to do things the way we want and how we want it. In Romans 1, 18 to 32, we see that ignoring and rejecting God leads to confusion and downward spiral. The Message Bible version gives us a more graphic description of how we got to end up in this chaotic mess. And this is what it says. What happened was this. People knew God perfectly well. But when they didn't treat him like God, refusing to worship him, they trivialized themselves into silliness and confusion so that there was neither sense nor direction in their lives. And God said in effect, if that's what you want, that's what you get. It wasn't long before they were living in a pig pen, smeared with filth, filthy inside and out. And all this because they traded the true God for a fake God and worshipped the God they made instead of the God who made them. Worse followed. Refusing to know God, they soon didn't know how to be human either. Women didn't know how to be women. Men didn't know how to be men. Sexually confused, they abused and defiled one another. Women with women, men with men, all lost and no love. And then they paid for it. Oh, they paid for it. Emptied of God and love, godless and loveless wretches. Since they didn't bother acknowledging God, God stopped bothering them and let them run loose. And then all hell broke loose, rampant evil, grabbing and grasping, vicious backstabbing. They made life hell on earth with their envy, wanton killing and bickering and cheating. They know perfectly well they are spitting in God's face and they don't care. Worse, they hand out prizes to those who do the worst things best. So this whole chaos and confusion that we see today started with men ignoring God rejecting God and kicking God out of their lives. Today, God is being kicked out of schools, especially in the Western world. Young people are being fed with poisonous, demonic, destructive, damaging information through schools, through the internet, through media, entertainment, music, movies, cartoons. School curriculums are sexualized in the name of sex education. Imagine teaching young children about sex change, how to have sex, how to masturbate. What's that? Again, I say it is a deliberate, strategic and demonic scheme to brainwash, to disciple, indoctrinate and influence in order to ruin lives, create chaos and keep people trapped in immorality. Be sensitive in your spirit, watch and pray. We are not to be ignorant of Satan's devices, else he will outwit us. We can't live our lives in our own terms and think that everything will go just fine. There are principles that ought to guide us on how to live effectively. And these principles were given to us by the one who created us. See what the man of God, Kunle Sariyo, has to say about this. You know, you don't swim on your own terms. You can't jump to the pool and say, I want to swim like this. Because you're an adult, nobody will stop you from swimming like this. But as you are swimming on your terms, you will perish on your terms. Because there is a protocol to swimming. Before you ever step into the water, you must know the protocol, understand the protocol, rehearse the most protocol, master the protocol, then submit yourself to the protocol. When you enter the water, you align with the protocol of swimming and you will swim successfully. Once you get there and say, no, what do you mean? I don't believe in, look, let me tell you something. They say, where we have to move because the wisdom key, look, we want to do like this. Yes, all adults will have their way, but this is how you are going to perish. By the time they are bringing you out, that's it. You are done. Do you understand? In the same way, you don't live this life on your terms. There's a protocol to living life and you have to surrender to it. Now, I don't know what your story is or what your past looks like, but I am compelled to tell you that God loves you so much and that he is willing to take the broken pieces of your life and put it together into something 
very beautiful if you will give it to him. You don't need any other identity. Your true identity is in Christ. So go ahead and discover God because in discovering God, you discover you. Thank you for sticking it through with me in this episode. So please, I encourage you, as always encourage you, maybe you've been watching this thing since, but you have not subscribed. Ah, today is the day in the name of Jesus. I encourage you to please like, subscribe, and share our videos, and leave us a comment in our comment section. I just love seeing your comments, and definitely I'll respond to it. Until I come your way next time, my name is Michelle, and this is Youth Circle TV. God bless you. Bye.